we will evaluate the given trig expressions using the 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 reference triangles shown here on the right. Notice the given angles are in the first quadrant, or in this case, a quadrantal angle, and therefore, we will not have to sketch the reference triangles on the unit circle. Because the angles are in the first quadrant, the legs will only have positive values. However, if the angles were not in the first quadrant, we would have to sketch the reference triangles on the coordinate plane because the sign of the legs will change based upon the quadrant of the reference angle and reference triangle. And for a quick review, using right triangle trigonometry, the sine of angle A is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. The cosine of angle A is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And the tangent of angle A is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. In the first expression, we begin by simplifying the inner expression of sine pi over three. And since pi over three radians is equal to 60 degrees, we can use the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle to determine the sine of pi over three. The sine of pi over three radians is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which is square root three divided by two. The expression simplifies to inverse cosine of square root three divided by two. From here, inverse cosine of square root three divided by two is equal to the angle in the closed interval from zero to pi radians that has a cosine function value of square root three divided by two. And again, because the cosine function value is positive, the angle is in the first quadrant, and therefore we can use the reference triangle as is. Well, if we look at the angle of 30 degrees, or in radians, one-sixth pi radians, the cosine function value is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is square root three divided by two, which means inverse cosine of square root three divided by two is equal to three degrees, or in radians, pi over six, or one-sixth pi radians. And since the original angle is given in radians, we should give the simplified expression back in radians. The next expression is inverse sine of cosine pi over four. Pi over four radians is equal to 45 degrees. So using the 45, 45, 90 reference triangle, the cosine of pi over four radians is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is one divided by square root two. The expression simplifies to inverse sine of one divided by square root two. Inverse sine of one divided by square root two is equal to the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a sine function value of one divided by square root two. And again, because the sine function value is positive, the angle is in the first quadrant, and therefore we can use the reference triangle as is. Well, notice how not only is the cosine of pi over four radians equal to one divided by square root two, so is the sine function value because the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is also one divided by square root two. And therefore, inverse sine of one divided by square root two is equal to 45 degrees, or in radians, pi over four radians, or one fourth pi radians. Next, we have inverse sine of cosine pi over six radians. We should recognize pi over six as three degrees. So using the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, the cosine of pi over six radians is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse which is square root three divided by two. The expression simplifies to inverse sine of square root three divided by two. Inverse sine of square root three divided by two is equal to the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a sine function value of square root three divided by two. So again, using the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle, the sine of 60 degrees or the sine of pi over three radians is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse which is square root three divided by two, and therefore inverse sine of square root three divided by two is equal to 60 degrees, or in radians, pi over three radians, or one third pi radians. And now the last example is a little bit different because the angle is pi over two radians, which is equal to 90 degrees, which is a quadrantal angle. So we won't be able to use a reference triangle to evaluate sine of pi over two. We will either have to use a unit circle or our knowledge of the graph of the sine function. We will look at both. Using the unit circle, we would sketch the angle of pi over two radians in standard position, which is 90 degrees. So here's the initial side, here's the terminal side. The terminal side intersects the unit circle at the point zero comma one, 
And since sine theta is equal to y, sine pi over two radians is equal to one, the expression simplifies to inverse cosine of one, or based upon our knowledge of the graph of the sine function, at pi over two radians, the sine function value is positive one. Inverse cosine of one is equal to the angle on the closed interval from zero to pi radians that has a cosine function value of one. On the unit circle, x is equal to one at this point here with the ordered pair one comma zero, which means the initial side and terminal side of the angle are both along the positive x-axis, and therefore the angle is zero radians or zero degrees. Inverse cosine of one is equal to zero degrees or zero radians. Or based upon our knowledge of the graph of the cosine function, since the output of inverse cosine is only from zero to pi radians, notice over this interval, the cosine function value is one here when the angle is zero degrees or zero radians. I hope you found this helpful.